Is it fair that Ontario has a publicly funded Catholic school system? That's the question we're asking this week. Now, perhaps this needs a little explaining. Ontario has a completely publicly funded Catholic school system. That means that my kids go to Catholic school and I don't pay for it. Well, my taxes go to pay for it. But this week is also Catholic Education Week, so it's an opportunity to look at the benefits of our Catholic education. Our two guests today, Dan Reedy from the Dufferin Peel Catholic School Board and Les Miller from the York Catholic School Board, they will be with me shortly to join in on this conversation. But we begin at Holy Family Catholic Elementary School in Woodstock, Ontario. I like going to a Catholic school because I enjoy bringing my religion into my schoolwork. I also like all the students. They can connect with each other because they know about Jesus and they may be able to help each other in a difficult situation. They teach us that no matter what predicament, predicament you're in, God's always there with open arms ready to help you and guide you back to Him. I really like religion because I get to learn about Jesus. You learn about your faith and you, it answers a lot of questions in life like how we ha started and like how Jesus came to save us. It, it, it makes it a little tougher but it, it's fun. I guess I like religion class and stuff. So I like Catholic schools because um, everyone's friends and you can support everyone. I like going to a Catholic school because you can have a relationship with God. Everyone's happier and it's just a happy place. And I like learning about God and how He created us and how Jesus died for us. I like hearing about all His miracles because I find them really interesting. We, we respect each other much more for the fact that we're Catholic. Like in, at recess and stuff and in the classes, everyone's friends. In a public school, you wouldn't really be able to relate to your faith as much, but in a in a Catholic school, everyone, everyone understands how, like, what your faith is and what you're meaning to say. We all love each other, we're a family, and no matter what happens, we're in it together. Those were kids from Holy Family Catholic Elementary School in Woodstock, Ontario. And, I mean, listening to them, they just look like regular kids who feel very at home in their Catholic school. Now. Our uh, two guests are sitting here with me now, Dan Reedy. He's the uh, academic coordinator at the Dufferin Peel Catholic School Board. And Les Miller, he's the religion coordinator at the York Catholic School Board. Now, if I can ask you, again, it seems from listening to these kids that the only difference between a Catholic school and a public school is, is the religion component. Is it fair to say that? Well, I don't believe so. In, the, in our Catholic schools, we certainly do have our religious education mm -hmm. and family life classes, and we're very proud of those classes. But it permeates everything that we do within our Catholic schools, okay. from the morning prayers, through the way that our lessons are taught, you know, the different interactions that, that go on in the hallways. You know, we're trying to create that Catholic ethos. Now, as, a, as an institution, if, it, if I can call, the, I guess, the boards an institution, does it have to do then with with your vision or your mission? Like, how do you make sure that everything is integrated that way? It's the, the, one of the beauties of Catholic education in Ontario is that all the school boards share a common vision. We work uh, closely with uh, and are guided well by the Ontario Conference of Catholic Bishops okay. and their articulation of the Catholic graduate expectations. So they've helped us to form a vision of what it is that we would hope a child would have experienced on their way through their time with us so that when they go out in the world into post-secondary education, we could say from any Catholic school board in Ontario that this child has had a fulsome experience of intellectual growth, of spiritual growth, of emotional and social and physical growth, so that, not to use too trite a phrase, but that these kids are ready to to, to take their next step towards being fully alive. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's a more whole, holistic, I guess, fair we to believe say? So. We believe so. Uh, approach to, to, that, to growth? Yeah, we believe individual. that the spiritual component of, the, of their life and development is so central that it, it really is, would, they would be a lesser person or it would be a lesser education if they didn't get the chance to let their spirituality uh, be explored through all those other Okay, now it makes sense to me that if it was a private school, 
that it would be great that the private school would have that mandate. Sure. This is our, our, our idea of what it means to be a, a full human being. But when we talk about public education, and I, I'm not, I don't necessarily want to challenge the fact that we have it, but, but I want to try to understand how we ended up with this. You know, if you can give me maybe the two-minute history lesson sure. on uh, how, why do we have a publicly funded Catholic school system? Well, if you go back to uh, Confederation, you have... Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk real fast. 140 <laughs> years ago, yeah. yeah. No, 140 years ago. We had an English, large, largely Protestant, and a French, largely Catholic schools. And okay. it was all about guaranteeing rights in each other's provinces. So the French agreed to... Uh, guarantee the Protestant rights in Quebec, and the uh, and the English uh, guaranteed the Catholic rights in Ontario. Okay. So out of that agreement, the Catholic schools were formed. Okay. So it had more not so much to do with religion as it had to do with French English. That that was part of it. I mean, religion is always part part of uh -huh. it, but that was a, a substantial. So is it fair to say then 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 it was the the English Protestant sector that became Secular? Is that what happened? Well, it's the dominant culture was English and, and, and Protestant, and, and, and that's where we, we do find a lot of our, our, our secular people. But the, you know, there's some very fine Protestant. Uh, uh, no, no, but I, I, I guess my question is at some point something yeah. changed in, in the Protestant English that didn't change in the Catholic that was no longer just French. That's right. And, right. and so if you look at Confederation, there was the will. To, to really confederate, to, to keep communities together and, and build this one unified community. So French and English, Catholic and Protestant figured out a way to accommodate each other through these systems. As time has gone on, the landscape and the, the demographic makeup of Ontario has shifted dramatically. We've welcomed children from all over the world, from all mm -hmm. different faith traditions, mm -hmm. and they need to find a home and a place to have a publicly funded education. It, just is not the natural place for many of those students from many of those different cultures and traditions to, to come into a Catholic school system to find a, a, a fulsome education. The public school is the more natural home for those kids right. to, to, to have that educational experience. Um, I think I'd like to go actually to the question of the week. Uh, this is the question that's posted on our, on our site all week long. Is it fair that Ontario has a publicly funded Catholic school system? And we received this comment um, from Gerard Biamungu, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, he says, I'm not an expert in Canadian history, but I understand that the Catholic Church has been in charge of public education in Canada for many years. It shouldn't be surprising then that in Ontario, the tradition is still practiced. Inasmuch as people want to secularize everything, we would be making mistakes by ignoring historical traditional facts which made Canada what it is today, i.e., the role of the church in such areas like education and health. I'm not entirely sure whether he's right, whether it's true that the church has always been in charge of education um, as it is in other countries, but is it fair to say that the church always ha has had a place or a role in education? They've had a formative influence uh, and we could, you know, we could say formally over the last 140 years or so, but I think more informally over the last at least 400 years when you look at the founding of Canada, or mm -hmm. the region we know now as Canada and New France, and uh, understand who those first uh, Europeans were that came, they didn't come alone. They were accompanied by Jesuits. So we're going now back to like the 1600s. That's right. <laughs> so there's a long tradition of the church being involved, not only in, in uh, the education, but all cultural aspects. Okay, so this is even before because there was no government. There's no, so who's educating is the church. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. Because for the church, that was important. Um, I suppose you could even trace it back to the early church or the Middle Ages, but we're not going to do that right. in Canada. Now, I don't think people will disagree that the church should play a role. Yes. So if the church should play a role, then what about the other churches? What about the Anglican church? We don't you, deny that they could have, they could do, they, their uh, uh, traditions could make marvelous contributions to public education. We're just uh, saying that it would be uh, in, inappropriate, it would be a wrong-headed move, we think, to try to take away the very successful Catholic education system that's there. Okay, so because it's successful, because it works, because it's good, because it's good that we have it? 
<laughs> for all of the above? All of the above, we would say. Less. Yeah, and, there are, and the fact that we have 670,000 Catholic students in the province of Ontario. Okay, so, well. uh, okay, so, so does, does a lot of it have to do with numbers? Well, the, the, we it's, cer it's certainly a factor when you have a third of our population, uh, our student population in Ontario going to Catholic, our Catholic schools. Yeah, one in three schools. And that was the debate that, uh, that happened in 1984. Do our Catholic students have the same rights as people who are going to, to public schools? Was it fair? And they said, no, it wasn't fair. And, then, and that's where Catholic schools funding was extended to, uh, to at that time, grade 13. When it was, because it was only up to grade 10 or grade 9. Yeah. Um, is it that it's fair because there's so many Catholics, or it can work because there's so many Catholics? If they were directing taxes, um, all the Muslim people would direct their taxes to that system, the numbers maybe wouldn't add up because it wouldn't be enough. Is that part of the...? Yeah, that is part, part of what's, what's, what's going on. Yeah. I think that, that as systems grow, as, or as demography changes within the country, it may be that other, other faith traditions okay. would be recognized, yeah. but at, uh, at okay. this point, Catholics certainly have substantial uh, representation yeah. and requests to be served, and they are being served. Okay, Dan? And we wouldn't want to take the view um, that we'd, we, we'd be responding willy-nilly to, to, to blips and demographics. We'd like to take the long view and, and take that conserving view of holding on to the great traditions that we have. Mm -hmm. And in Ontario, one of the founding and enduring traditions has been Catholic education. There's because our graduates are so successful, our education is of very high quality. Most of our boards meet or exceed the provincial benchmarks mm -hmm. in, in provincial testing. There's nothing broken about our system. It serves well. And at the secondary level, it serves not only the Catholic constituents, but it but also anyone. serves um, anyone who wishes to come and participate. Yeah. You know what? I think we're going to actually take a break at this point. Um, but we're not going to be long, so don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to continue this conversation. And in particular, we're going to look at uh, sex education. So don't go anywhere. Let us know your perspective. Email us at perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or reach us by mail. Perspectives at Salt and Light Television, 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C. 1P1 or call us toll free at 1 888 302 7181. Let your perspective be heard. In Catholic school, we learn that education is essential. We learn to pray, to praise God, and that everyone is important in God's eyes. We learn to forgive and to love one another. We also learn to add, subtract, and multiply, and to divide. We learn to believe in ourselves and that everyone is different. We learn to stand up for what is right and to respect others. In Catholic school, we learn to thank God for everything. We learn to go to confession and to say, I'm sorry. We learn to say please and to help others. We learn how to tie our shoes and to be calm during fire drills. We learn to do our homework and not to cheat. In Catholic school, we learn to receive Holy Communion and to love Jesus' Blessed Mother. We also learn to wait our turn, not to brag, to not waste anything, and not to hit. We learn to clean up after ourselves and that Jesus died for us. That short reflection uh, was adapted from a poem. I don't even know if I can call it a poem, um, but it was written by students at Our Lady of Victory Catholic School in State College, Pennsylvania. It, it was published by Spirit and Arts, so uh, thank you for that. Um, now, I didn't go to a Catholic school. I actually went to an Episcopal school, an Anglican school. Um, and a lot of the things that was mentioned in that little poem, I learned as well, respect each other, say please and thank you. Maybe I learned that at home. I don't know if I learned it at school. You know, tie your shoelaces. Um, religion, for me, was learned in church. Mm -hmm. isn't, isn't that the way it should be? Well, in an, in an ideal world, you would, you would have our, our, uh, our families being the first teachers and, uh, of the faith. And a lot of the work would be done within the faith. And it is in, in, in many of our mm -hmm. Catholic families. Mm -hmm. But not so much anymore in, in a large number uh, of our families. Uh, and we don't have the greatest attendance at Mass 
that we yeah. want to do. We're, we're about, if we're lucky, 20% of our, our, yeah. our students, if we're lucky. And uh, so we have this, uh, in our Catholic schools, we have this unique opportunity to reach out and, 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 and if you want, touch the, the, the students that we, we have yeah. with, with the faith, that yeah. you wouldn't get, be getting the message in many other places. Um, not that I'm struggling with this idea, but uh, my son, for example, he's going to high school next year. And he chose, we decided to not push him whether he should go to a Catholic school or not. Because I didn't go to one, so I figured, and he's getting faith at home, and, and he, goes to, he does go to Mass every Sunday. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to force him. I don't have to force him. Um, but he chose to go to the Catholic school. But he's, out of, out of a class of 22 kids or so, grade 8 kids in his, in his school, four of them are going to the Catholic school. And, and I've spoken to some of them. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to X school or whatever? And, and they say, oh, because at the Catholic school, I, I, lose a I lose a credit because I have to take religion. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, and I said to my son, well, you realize that religion is probably the most important thing you're ever going to learn. And he thought about it for about three seconds and said, I don't think so. And, and it's mm -hmm. because they don't, they don't get it. Right. So how do we get them to, not to understand, but to, to, to really, uh, the, the, or, or to get the parents to understand that, 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 it, that it's not just that we learn religion, that, that it's integ this integration of faith. And I'm wondering if you can give me an example of how that could work. Um, like in other classes outside of religion? Well, I guess we would hope that parents would, would um, as they watch their children doing their homework or doing other school assignments, begin to see that over the years as they've been attending Catholic school, they've been immersed in, in one story, one narrative, the, the, the great story of, of the, the life, the death, the resurrection, the salvation action of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And as they've engaged in that story, from before school with their family and then through kindergarten and up through, they've gone through deeper and deeper layers. So that story forms the mental landscape that they use to make meaning of everything else that they see in the world. Right. So we would hope that as their parents are watching them do their science homework or their geography homework, part of the landscape for making meaning out of those lessons is uh, parables, gospel stories, um, references to the to the stories of the Catholic tradition mm -hmm. so that by the time they get to the upper grades, every time they have an assignment, every time they engage a text, it has a twofold purpose for them. It it maybe even a threefold purpose. They learn the you know the, the mundane secular material of the elements of physics or geography. But at the next hand, they have an experience of, of sacramentality. They've got the eye to see the, the trace of God at work. And at third hand, they have an experience of moral discernment. Right. They have an opportunity to figure out for themselves, how ought I be to be and how should I act? So I like the idea of the landscape and, and whether they realize it or not, that's happening. And that's the challenge is that when you ask a child or you ask any person when they're amidst of experience that's not complete yet, when that formation experience is not complete, it's pretty hard for them to A, articulate and B, art. Uh, appreciate what has been done on their behalf and what they've done for themselves until they come out at the other end and are able to to do some carefully uh, you know guided reflection and so that's what we hope grade 12 looks like now so are there but are there elements that would be different I'm thinking of this whole discussion that we had last week or two weeks ago with the whole sex education and and it seemed that the Catholic schools were well we're out of this conversation because we got our own thing right. Um, is that what's going on? Is it fair to say that the sex education that's happening in the Catholic schools, because it's integrated, because it, it, it's, it's in the context of that landscape, mm -hmm. is different or, or better? Well, we believe it's more complete because we're, we're, we're looking at it from, from a, a spiritual perspective. It's all grounded in, uh, in our faith that we're saying, looking at sexuality and saying, this is a gift from God. And mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this supports you as a human person. This is, and, and, it's, and it's something to be celebrated, your, your, your sexuality. Not, we're not talking about sexuality in the sense of mechanics here. We're yes. talking about sexuality and who you are as a okay, so male let me or female. Let me just ask you this. But so you, the sex education is part of the religion curriculum? It's family life curriculum. Family life, which is? In elementary schools, it's integrated into the into high school the, uh, religion cl okay. curriculum. And, and, but if, then if it's not just health class or phys ed class, but in, uh, so it's? That's the place. Okay, so let me, let me just ask you this, 
just to go back to the funding. So if I want education, if I want that education for my children, right. is that my right? Am I entitled to that? And should the state provide provide me with it? With and, that? And again, we would say that's been the tradition of, of working right. with the community of Ontario. That's been the expectation. And um, there's no reason for them not to continue to have that because we do such an excellent job. Yeah. It, okay, that's fair. I, I, I'll tell you why I, sure. you'll understand why I asked that because here's another comment. Yeah. Same question. Um, this came from Tara Fernandez, and she says, the, actually, the discussion, it, it, it was interesting because there was a lot of back and forth people yeah. responding to each other on in the discussion. It was truly a discussion. And, and uh, it, the discussion had taken a bit of a turn uh, to look at the difference between private, right. you know, well, if you want that, go to a private school, public versus public. And Tara Fernandez writes, you can't deny that more privately funded school, Catholic schools are committed to faith formation give their kids the opportunity to go to Mass regularly and really educate children on the Church's teachings. My entire elementary and high school education was through publicly funded Catholic schools, but I definitely did not receive my faith formation from there and continue to meet teachers in the Catholic school board who are Catholic in name only, educating our children the future of the Church. It is only by the grace of God that I started going back to church in my 20s. And I think that a lot of people might might have had that experience. So well, is, those are regrettable experiences, and, and they do occur occasionally. But I think her key phrase was there, by the grace of God, <laughs> that, that, that God has been with her through that journey, you know. And um, she's had an opportunity to receive this education for free and take from it what she wished or was able to take from it. And we want all children to have that circumstance, that opportunity. Boy, if we were to scale back and say, you may have the experience of Catholic Christian education only if you can afford it, or only if you can find a sponsor or find a subsidy, mm -hmm. what a tremendous blow to the, to, the, to the evangelization, to the mission of the church. But would that not make parents um, take more responsibility for their children's education? Well, I don't know if parents in the Catholic system are any less responsible with regard to their, uh, to their students' welfare and their students' education than our parents in the public school board. Mm -hmm. I think we hear similar stories mm -hmm. about challenges with parent engagement, yeah. similar stories about concern about, uh, you know, regard for homework, regard for discipline, regard yeah. for uh, respect for teachers, respect for property. I think the stories um, are not any different. So I. I don't think that causing a person to pay a fee yeah, no, that's fair. Will, will take them down any much further down the road of valuing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it is Catholic Education Week. Yes. We're officially celebrating 168 years, even though you wanted me to go back to the 1600s. <laughs> um, or, <laughs> well, 168 years, that's inter interesting because, as you said, it, you took me back to Confederation. Yeah, that's only 140. A beyond, so it's even before upper Confederation. And lower Canada, yeah. sure. um, I think that it's a gift. I don't know if it's fair or not fair, but it's a gift that we have it. It works. It's good. Yeah. Should we take it for granted? Are we always going to have it? No, I don't think uh, we can take it for granted at all. And that's why we're involved with Catholic Education Week. And this, this, this year's theme is Rejoicing in Hope. Mm. And it does look forward to the future. And, and, and there are different sub-themes within it. Uh, hope in our hearts, hope in our homes, hope in our schools, hope in mm. our communities and parishes, hope in our world, just going outwards. Right and into the future about where we should stand in, in Catholic education as beacons of hope, celebrating, celebrating who we are. What, what do you see in the future for Catholic schools in Ontario? There will always be Catholic schools in our, there will, I mean. You heard it here it's, first. It's yeah. what we say about church. Church is divine, it's the institution that may get a little messy at times in the same. Catholic education will always be there. Bishops will always have a flock of families and communities that, that want their children to have that experience. It's to what extent it's uh, gonna be publicly funded, that may be, mm -hmm. may be a question, but, but if, as you say, the spirit is involved in this process and, and the spirit is inspiring hope, it'll, it'll continue and it'll continue to have a high profile in this province. It'll continue to be a prominent part of, of the life and the makeup of Ontario. Yeah, good. That's a good, good, good note to end because it's time for our last words. We always like to end with, leave the last word to the one who is the word. Right. Um, and uh, as you both know, the gospel this, this weekend, on Sunday rather, is from John uh, chapter 14. Um, and a portion of that gospel goes like this. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. 
and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So that's from John chapter 14, verse 25 and 26. Les, would you like to share something? The word that jumps out there, of course, me being an educator, is teach. The Holy and, Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I, exactly. And I think that that's what we're doing. We're, we're trying to, uh, to, to point to our, uh, our students how wonderful the world is, the God-created universe it is. And uh, my favorite paintings is, uh, is Van Gogh's uh, Starry Night. Mm -hmm. And in that Starry Night, you've got a church right in the middle, and the spire is pointing up into the heavens. And in, over this dark village, it's saying, wake up, it's fantastic. The beauty of the heavens are dancing. Let's join in that. Nice, thank you, Dan. Marvelous reflection, Les. <laughs> and as well as that, that great message to our students, I think there's a, there's a great uh, imperative for, for the other stakeholders, for the leaders of our system. I hear a twin call there, the call to obedience. We don't own this mission on our own. We don't own this project on our own. It's a project of the whole church. So it's to be obedient to, to Christ's call, to be ever present and ever vigilant, ever on a missionary uh, journey towards those kids. But I also hear the call of hope to know that you may never see the whole of this project come to fruition in one child, but the Spirit is with you. With the grace and the goodness and the accompaniment of the Spirit, you'll have the opportunity to contribute to the best of your ability and your talents, and then uh, the, it'll uh, carry on. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I thank you so much. I, I do think that it's also to keep in mind that the Spirit is at work and guiding. And I, I hope this conversation has been useful uh, for our viewers in, in to know that th people are working behind the scenes here, that there is a vision, there's a mission. Um, you can it, ch check the websites of your local uh, school boards and, and find out what the mission vision is. I certainly encourage people to, to speak to their school trustees to make sure that they're voting for their Catholic school trustees. Um, and maybe if I can say that um, the default is that your tax dollars go to support the public system. If your children are in Catholic school, or if you are Catholic and you want to support the Catholic system, uh, find out how you can make sure that your, your tax portion is uh, uh, designated yes. to support the Catholic system. It's, it's possible and it's important that we do so. So thank you both. Our two guests have been Dan Reedy, academic coordinator at the Dufferin Peel Catholic School Board and Les Miller. He's the religion coordinator for the York Catholic School Board. If you'd like to continue this conversation, we do want to hear your comments. Join the discussion at facebook.saltandlighttv.org. And don't forget, you can also visit our own website to watch this show again or to share your comments or to check out the question of the week. saltandlighttv.org slash perspectives. That's all for tonight. We'll see you next week. May God bless you and your home.